Flash Live. I'm your host, Maddie Mustin. Happy Friday, everybody, as we head into 2022. This Flash Live is your home for live and exclusive Greater West Bloomfield news and interviews. We're here to bring you featured stories from local events and businesses to showcase our great community. This Flash Live is now daily from 9.30 to 10 a.m. on Comcast Channel 15, at t Channel 99, and as well as on CivicCenterTV.com under the live section of your web browser on mobile and mobile device from Monday through Friday. So join us as we take a look at what is happening around our greater West Bloomfield community. First thing we're gonna start off with every day is we highlight um, a person of the week. Every week we highlight someone from our greater West Bloomfield community that is making an impact. We will now be taking submissions for our person of the week through the QR code on the screen. To submit an entry, you can scan the QR code on the screen, fill out the short Google form with the person's name, reason that they should be recognized for the person of the week and some contact information for them. These nominations can be anyone from educators, students, local businesses, or any other organization that you think deserves to be recognized as our person of the week. We're now gonna dive into our community events uh, that are happening around the Greater West Bloomfield community. The first one is the United We Walk event. This was scheduled to happen on Sunday, January 16th to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This has been canceled due to the rising numbers of COVID-19 cases in Michigan. They will instead be urging community members to volunteer around Metro Detroit to honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They're volunteering at a couple of the organizations that they have picked. The first one is the Focus Hope. They have volunteer opportunities in Inkster, Michigan. They're open Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4 p.m., as well as Friday from 8 to noon. They also are urging you to volunteer at the Hospitality House. They have volunteer and food donation opportunities. If you don't want to go somewhere and volunteer, you can drop off food and donate through that. The uh, Michigan Community Service Commission, they also have volunteer opportunities through that, as well as the Michigan Humane Society Pet Pantry Donation Program. You can donate food for pets, as well as the Grace Centers for Hope. You can buy a meal ticket for the homeless. It's only $2.17, so an easy way to give back to your community. The next event that we have are the West Bloomfield Township Public Library virtual programming events. They have begun their virtual programming for 2022, and this includes a variety of interactive events for all ages. Some of those events next week, uh, they have those Monday events to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They'll be hosting a virtual I Have a Dream story time at 1030, as well as a virtual, virtual African-American storytelling at 1 p.m. with Ms. Rosie. And on Tuesday, January 18th, they have two positively preschool virtual sessions as well. Uh, this one is at 9.30 a.m. and the other one is at 11 a.m. If you'd like to register for any of these events, you can do so by going to the West Winfield Township Public Library website in their events calendar page and register by clicking on the event of your choice. Our next event we want to look at is the Sylvan Salon event. The Sylvan Salon Committee is hosting another salon in January. These salons work to educate the community and create dialogue about social issues that are happening in our community. Their fourth salon will be held on January 18th at Board and Brush Studio. They have a 615 social and a 7 p.m. presentation by attorney Gabby Silber. She works with the University of Michigan Innocence Clinic. She'll be speaking at the salon about her work with the innocence community and the wrongfully convicted. She'll also be exploring stories of the accused and how they are charged and convicted. Capacity is limited to 30, so you can reserve your $5 seat through contacting Kelly Krause on the Sylvan Lake Salon Committee. Uh, all proceeds will be added to the Sylvan Summer 2022 Concert Fund, a great way to get together with your community members to talk about some of those social, social issues that are happening in our community. And that last event that is ongoing that we want to talk about is the Sylvan Lake Game Nights. If you're looking for something fun to do this winter, whether you go alone or with your friends, the Sylvan Lake Game Nights are a great way to socialize safely with your neighbors and friends. Sylvan Lake Game Nights take place every Wednesday when there is not a Sylvan Lake board meeting in the community center. Game Nights start at 5.30 p.m. and will go to about 9 p.m. at the community center. This event is open to all Sylvan Lake residents and you're welcome to bring any family and friends. They'll also be hosting a special Euchre tournament on January 19th at 6 p.m. sharp. If you're interested in participating, you can contact Amy DeCanter at 574-514-1919 to reserve your spot in the tournament. If you have an event that you would like us to have feature here on the Splash Live, you can send us a message on our social media pages at Civic Center TV and Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. We're now gonna take a look at our person of the week that we recognize. 
Uh, this week we recognize motivational strategy speaker and mindset life coach Stacey Renee. She uh, is our person of the week this week because of her work in the community and her work inspiring young women to be the best version of themselves. So let's go take a look at why Stacey is our person of the week. Over the past year, more and more people find it hard to stay motivated and to keep life positive. That's why Stacy Renee, a motivational speaker and mindset life coach, is hard at work to help others in the community. You know, during this time, and not even just this time, but any time throughout the future and moving forward, this is what life is about, is the ups and downs. Has this one been a little crazy? Absolutely, but you know what? We're all gonna be given a handful of things, sometimes one at a time, sometimes two, sometimes 10, and it's all in how you handle the situation. With several appearances on the Oakland County Megacast, Stacey Renee has talked many key points to living a happy life, including time spent on social media. The amount of sleep that we are getting nowadays is a lot less because we are so connected to social media. We are so connected to online streaming. And sometimes we have to stop, step back, and really take a look at your life and what you're doing and how many hours you really are online. It's crazy to think how much we are. Stacy has also put in work to help the community, such as collecting winter apparel to be donated to the homeless and several shelters. Most of us barely even wear the stuff that we have. And of course, we're gonna buy more, more things and we all like new things, but what are you gonna do with your old stuff? In fact, here's an interesting fact. About 70 new garments are bought every single year for one household family that has about five people in it. So if you think about that, 70 new items, it's almost, you know, a new clothing item every single year, like every day. It's, it's crazy to think about it that way. So donating your old clothes to charity might make you feel better and then, you know, and you're not putting them in the trash. Stacy serves on many boards in the community and brings a positive energy to remind us all to keep our own thoughts positive so they can manifest in real life. But it's so true in how we think, how we feel, what our thoughts are. I love saying thoughts are reality and focus on what you want and not what you don't want. And that's a huge thing for all of us. Stacey Renee's drive to help and motivate others during such hard times is why she is our person of the week. Thank you to Stacey Renee for all of her work that she does in the community through her motivational speaking as well as donating those winter clothes for those that don't have um, those winter items in their wardrobe this winter. We're now going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll be joined by Executive Director for the Greater West Bloomfield of Palmers, Suzanne Levine. So don't go anywhere. We will take a short break, but after the break, we will be joined by Suzanne. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov slash flu. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine to keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. And now back to the splash live. Welcome back to the splash live. I'm your host, Maddie Mushton. It is now time for our Friday regular guest, Executive Director for the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce, Suzanne Levine. Suzanne has held this position since August of 2012 and has worked diligently to support the West Bloomfield community. She has also created several groups in the community to support the diverse population in Greater West Bloomfield, including the Senior Resource Group 
and the next big thing, the Business Innovator Generator. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Suzanne. Thank you for having me once again. So Suzanne, let's first talk about throughout the pandemic, the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce has made sure that the businesses and community members they serve are not being forgotten. You and your team have created a ton of virtual programming. What was some of the inspiration behind creating these virtual events for our community? Well, I think that most people still want to be informed and stay connected and feel like they had some sort of social interaction. So when the pandemic hit, we all had to go into a reinvention mode. And it was like the perfect opportunity to figure out how we can still present that what used to be in-person opportunities now to do them via Zoom and Facebook Live. And they've been very successful. And I think it's really great that we can still connect people with leaders, with information, um, and with some social interaction. And Suzanne, let's talk about some of these specific virtual events, such as the free classes taught by Vito Kukuru and the big business innovator uh, generator. What do these virtual events look like through the Chamber of Commerce? Well, Vito has been really inspirational. He teaches free Google classes, everything from how to write the perfect email to how to make sure that your social media is the way that represents a positive image of you. So these classes are free. If you go to our website, westbloomfieldchamber.com, uh, you can see all of them. And uh, it's amazing that he's doing this because there is no charge. And this is really his time that he's donating to the chamber and to the community to make sure that they stay informed and uh, have some education at, at the same time. Uh, the Connect with an Expert has been great. Um, our last one, we had Shane Pliska, uh, who is the uh, president of Plantera, and he talked about this new co-working space that a lot of the, re a lot of the um, commercial spaces are now offering. Because as you know, as, as more people have transitioned to working at home, some of these retail uh, I'm sorry, commercial spaces have remained open. And um, so now they found a way to kind of integrate all of this where people can share some and collaborate in a, in a really nice environment. And Suzanne, what was some of the feedback that the chamber has gotten about these virtual events and classes thus far? People are really happy to find a way to connect and see other people uh, during these times. I know there are people that uh, do want to do some in-person uh, events, but some of our venues have been proceeding cautiously. Um, we had to kind of pivot and our installation of our board of directors that was supposed to be uh, on the 21st is now going to be, thanks to Civic Center TV, um, be live on the 28th The more details will follow. So we're just really trying to make sure that we can cover all our bases and serve the community um, and make sure that they stay informed and connected. And Suzanne, you mentioned the installation of board officers. Let's talk a little bit about that event. What does it mean for the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce to be able to bring these new members in and work with them throughout helping those businesses um, on the ongoing pandemic and also in the new year? Well, I think it's important that the community understands who our board is because we have a wealth of knowledge and expertise on the board from Dr. Manu Malhotra, who is the chief medical officer at Henry Ford uh, West Bloomfield Hospital, to uh, Alan Mandel, who's our real estate expert. Um, and it runs the entire gamut of our community from small to large businesses. And um, I think what is really great is that I started this a new um, kind of procedure where I'm connecting our members to the board directly, hoping that there can be some mutual collaboration. But if they want to get some other insight into, let's say, the real estate market, into payroll, into um, you know the hospital, uh, ways to keep safe and informed. So I'm doing this, you know, kind of a one-on-one -on -one business matchmaking and make sure, making sure that they understand who our board members are and how our board members are engaged in our community trying to help. And Suzanne, as we wrap up today, is there anything else that you wanted to share with the audience, whether that's about some of those virtual classes that you guys have or anything else going on in the chamber? 
just feel free to reach out to the chamber, uh, wbloomfieldchamber at gmail.com. Uh, even if you're not a member, I'm happy to try to support you. And that's what a Chamber of Commerce is there for. We are the voice of business. So, you know, please feel free uh, to attend our free senior resource uh, group classes, our talk times, if they go to uh, Parks and Rec and look those up. These are free to seniors. These are great classes that the chamber collaborates with to bring information to seniors and their children about how to sustain and maintain their, their health. Well, thank you so much for joining us this Friday morning, Suzanne. Thank you again always for all that you do for our community. Thank you. Once again, I was joined by Suzanne Levine. She is the Executive Director for the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. We're now going to visit the Orchard Lake Museum to learn a little bit about the history of curling in Orchard Lake. We got to talk to Gina Gregory, the president of the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society, about the history and a local curling Olympian who led the 1932 team to the Olympics. So let's go take a look at that. Did you know that curling in the United States started on Orchard Lake after being brought here by Scottish immigrants? West Bloomfield resident George Lawton led the United States curling team to the 1932 Olympics. We visited the Orchard Lake Museum to talk with Gina Gregory about curling history and George Lawton's legacy in Orchard Lake. Hi, I'm Gina Gregory, president of the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society, and today we're gonna to take a look at our items that we have about curling in our museum. Always, as of 2021, we have a new exhibit about sports and recreation in West Bloomfield. One of the things we included was our local Olympians. For curling, that first premiered here in the United States on Orchard Lake in the winter of 1831, uh, we thought that was significant, but also interesting in 1932, one of our members, George Lawton, a resident of West Bloomfield, uh, headed the Olympic team for curling, which was a demonstration sport that year. So we've learned that this D signifies demonstration. So he could have worn that on a sweater that was kind of stylish at that time. We also have a curling broom that's pretty unusual looking. Now when I see them, uh, all I see are the usual corn broom looking corn uh, brooms, although there are modern brooms as well. So that's what we have out all the time, along with a curling stone that he donated to the city of Orchard Lake Village. It was presented by the Detroit Curling Club in 1975. And then we have another one in the basement. So you can come in here and <laughs> lift it up. It's very heavy, but you can give it a try. So that's here all the time. The open house also displayed a few artifacts that were exclusive to the curling theme. One of these items was a soup tureen that was used to serve oyster stew as a tradition while they curled. They had numerous articles and fact pages about curling, as well as a sweatshirt from the Detroit Curling Club. And in the 70s, 1970s, it, the Cur Detroit Curling Club was housed in the old Centaur Farms Ice Arena. If you had many transitions after that, it was where Whirly Ball was played. So it's had a varied history, uh, but the curling was there. And when it did, it went from a smaller membership of about 150 up to 300 people. For more information on the history of curling in Orchard Lake, you can contact the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. Reporting for the Splash Live, I'm Maddie Muschin. Thank you to Gina for allowing us to come into the Orchard Lake Museum and give us a little bit of history on curling in Orchard Lake and some of those fun artifacts that they have there. We're now going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll talk with Joe Gaga. He is the new owner and publisher of the West Bloomfield Lifestyle Magazine. We're going to talk to him about his new position at the magazine. So don't go anywhere after the break. We'll talk with Joe. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. 
What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. to the Splash Live. Welcome back to the Splash Live. I'm your host, Maddie Mustin. West Bloomfield Lifestyle Magazine is the only luxury community-focused magazine in West Bloomfield area, making sure that they are involving the entire community and that the entire community is featured. So today to talk about that is Joe Gaga. He is the new publisher and owner of the magazine. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Joe. Hi, Maddie. Nice to see you again. Joe, so let's start off with talking about the West Bloomfield Lifestyle Magazine in general and what a West Bloomfield resident can get out of a subscription to the magazine. Well, yes, Maddie. I mean, with the new publication, it's been established for a couple of years now, and what we try to focus on in the publication is basically com connecting the local community with local businesses, and we also give them content on what's happening in the local community in West Bloomfield. So what they're getting with the publication is local businesses helping them grow, going to um, the most affluent homes in West Bloomfield, and also helping them connect with um, local content and what's going on in the local West Bloomfield community. So you get a, the advertisers and what's happening in West Bloomfield. That's what we want to focus local, local, local. That's what we're focusing on. Now, Joe, let's focus on your new role and how you got involved with the Lifestyle Magazine and assume the new position of owner and publisher of the magazine now. Yes, you know, I, I come from a background in advertising and marketing, working for big corporations, and I really wanted to, you know, get away from that, Maddie, and really focus on the local community of West Bloomfield, helping local businesses, you know, obviously coming out of COVID, you know, a lot of local businesses did suffer. And when my previous role, you know, I did not, you know, it was more of a broader reach. And I saw this opportunity where I could focus and help the local community. I'm from West Bloomfield, born and raised in West Bloomfield. So it was a home run for me. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I focused on that for my local people. So that's what made me, you know, go into this publication. Joe, you mentioned that you were born and raised here in West Bloomfield. What does it mean for you to be able to cover West Bloomfield, all of those businesses here, especially amidst the pandemic? Uh, it means a lot. Basically, it means like I'm helping them, ha helping them hand in hand. You know, I am the owner. They're meeting with the owner, and 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 just you know, I mean, we went through a tough tough period, and we're still going through a tough period. So, you know, you want to help these local people and local businesses grow, and 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 it means a lot to me. That's the main reason why I, well, uh, you know, attracted me to um, purchasing this publication. And with the publication, too, um, for the West Bloomfield Lifestyle Magazine, throughout the ongoing pandemic, have you guys seen any problems with staffing um, either writers or photographers with the publication? And how have you seen the pandemic kind of affect um, the workforce with you guys through the West Bloomfield Lifestyle Magazine? Well, to be honest, it hasn't really affected us. We're not a big company, not a big corporation. You know, the photographers that we have in-house and the local editorial people that we have, you know, they are locally, they are from the area, and um, they haven't affected us a great deal because, you know, the main thing is, is getting that, um, you know, reaching out to the right people. That's it. You mentioned, too, that all of your uh, staff members are local. Obviously, if they're going to be covering West Bloomfield, they need to understand the community and the businesses that we have here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about a couple of the staff members, those writers that you have on staff, and maybe give us a little glimpse into their new edition and what will be um, in the West Bloomfield Lifestyle magazine for the February edition? 
Yeah, I mean, the staff that I have, again, um, and uh, they've been all their lives in West Bloomfield. We got Amy and we got Joel Leese, the photographer as well. And um, basically they focus on the content that, that, you know, what is happening in West Bloomfield. They go and find out the local communities. They do networking. They, they actually interview businesses on what's happening in the local area. So um, the main thing is what we want to try and do with our publication is try to broaden the the understanding and and what people are doing in the community and and the staff that i have at the moment being born and raised here as well like me you know they know where to go and how to get that information and joe can you give us a little bit of an insight into your day-to-day -day as the owner and new publisher for the west bloomfield lifestyle magazine what does your day-to-day -day look like and how do you connect with these businesses in order to get a full published magazine out to the public? Well, you know, day-to-day -day basically is, you know, reaching out, being the new owner, introducing myself to the new businesses, stopping in, calling them over the phone. Um, that's my day-to-day. -day. Uh, we have advertisers currently with us that are running and they've been running since the inception of the magazine and they've been very, very happy and um, I use them um, as refer references as well to new advertisers to help grow within the community. So my day-to-day -day is really being out there, Maddie, introducing myself either face-to-face -face or over the phone and meeting with these clients personally. Joe, as we head into the new year and with your new position, what are you looking forward to most either personally or with the magazine as the new publisher and owner for the West Bloomfield Lifestyle magazine? Um, what are you looking forward to most for the year of 2022? Really just helping these businesses grow, expanding on the magazine. You know, there's some categories. See, I, I, it's, I'm kind of like the middleman, Maddie. So we, we deliver the magazine to businesses and homes, and we got to make them happy with the content that we have. And we got to make the advertisers happy that they're getting in front of the right people. So what I try and do is make sure that I have the right content in my magazine. So my focus for 2022 is some categories that we currently don't have in our magazine to make our, our readership more influent and more happy and as well, you know, help those advertisers grow with the categories that we don't have. So so that's what I want to do in the advertising sense, in the editorial and content sense. Again, just focus on the local community, focus on that readership and focus on that content and um, what's happening locally in your area. Joe, as we wrap up, how can one get a subscription to the lifestyle um, West Bloomfield magazine, whether that's a physical copy or their online subscription there? They can just directly contact me and I can take care of it for you. Not a problem. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Joe. Thank you very much, Maddie. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye, guys. Once again, I was joined by Joe Gaga. He is the new publisher and owner of West Bloomfield Lifestyle Magazine, telling us a little bit about their magazine and his new role. That's it for today's show. Thank you to Suzanne Levine and Joe Gaga for joining us this morning and a special thanks to our Zoom producer, Jared Clark, for coordinating the Zoom and making sure all of our guests join us. And as always, thank you to Calvin Brown, our board operator, for making the show possible each and every morning. Thank you so much for joining me this Friday morning as we explored all the people and events going on in the greater West Bloomfield community. Make sure to watch any interviews and stories that you missed by visiting civiccentertv.com to watch them online in HD under the Splash Live section on the website. And as always, make sure to tune in live on Civic Center TV on Comcast Channel 15 and at t Channel 99, Monday through Friday from 9.30 to 10 a.m. We will not be live on Monday as it is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, um, but we will be returning to regular scheduling Tuesday through Friday next week. I want to make sure you can catch up on what is going on in our greater West Bloomfield community. You can also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at civiccentertv.com and Facebook at civiccentertv15. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kegel Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Maddie Mushin. Thank you for watching The Splash Live.